So everyone is okay? Yes. You feeling okay? Did you sleep enough? No. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> you can sleep in my lecture, no problem. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk today about uh, biopsychology of yoga. Yoga is very much based on understanding of uh, human physiology and psychology also. So uh, this uh, psychology of yoga is very special way to understand human emotions. And uh, to me this understanding helped very much because I can understand myself, I can understand others also, and also I can understand how to change the state of mind, how to come out of negative state into a resourceful state of mind. So uh, why it is important to learn about this biopsychology of yoga? First of all, health. Health is important. It's just like a car. It runs on a particular kind of fuel. You can put some other fuel and can still drive maybe two kilometers, like we often do. Uh, we drivers are changing. So last time we went to Stockholm and we put diesel instead of gasoline into the car. So that was very <laughs> long ordeal. We had to go to the station and we have to, yeah, big problem. So human beings designed in a certain way uh, human beings designed to experience certain emotions and other emotions we can experience but they are harming us so we need to learn what are the useful emotions uh, negative emotions they also can be useful but you can only use them for short time if you use them all the time then you burn your entire structure you burn the entire system um, I want to start uh, this class with the uh, two stories Actually, I'm trying to make this class very compact because the whole seminar of uh, biopsychology is around 12 hours and I need to give in two hours. Today one hour and tomorrow one hour. Um, my grandmother, she was very sick at some point. Uh, she was in the hospital and she was diagnosed with the cancer of the brain. She has been giving, uh, telling me this story so many times. She said, you know, in my brain only two centimeters were healthy. Everything else was kaput. <laughs> Everything else was sick. So in Soviet Union there was this practice that if person is completely uh, no hope, hopeless patient, they will let go home. You go home and you die there peacefully. So they told uh, my parents, uh, she is very sick, we cannot do anything, we tried everything, we cannot do now anything. So maximum maybe seven to ten days she will be still alive and then prepare for the burial, spend time with her, yeah, prepare yourself for the worst. So she came home. And then uh, she became very inspired. She said, oh, okay, I'm going to die <laughs> in 10 days. She was a very deeply religious person, uh, Orthodox Christian. And uh, okay, I'm going to another stage of my life. So now I need to prepare. So she started to pray like five, six, whatever time she had, whatever strength she had, she was praying. And she got okay. <laughs> she was not praying to get healthy. She was very happy that I'm living now. But I need to prepare for another life. And she lived another 15 years. Of course, doctors, they couldn't believe. When they examined her, they couldn't believe. This is unexplainable situation. So when she was sick, I was like this. And then when she finally died, I was already adult and uh, yeah, and she lived a very good life. 
So that's one story. Another story, there is one uh, American uh, author, his name is Norman Cousins. He was suffering with a disease called spondylitis. That is the, that disease affects the uh, connecting tissues and makes your, your hands, your, your, your whole body stiff, very immobile. So he became like, like this and every movement gives him a lot of pain, so he cannot move. And, um, and doctors, they give him very little chances to, for recovery. So he thought that I will either die or I will spend my entire life as a handicapped person. But then somebody gave him one book about positive thinking. And he read that book and he thought, hmm, I always, always thought negatively. My whole life I taught myself to think negatively. But maybe if I think positively, then I can also recover. <laughs> so, but how to change the mind? How to move from negativity to positivity? So he found for himself uh, one recipe uh, is laughter. So he will make this laughter therapy. Uh, he got like books with different funny stories, different video cassettes with uh, comedy, and then he would laugh. And he liked to laugh. So he like, <laughs> so he will laugh very strongly. And then he found out that just even 15 minutes of very good laughter made him feel so good that he could sleep without painkillers for two hours. So he started to regularly practice. In one year of such therapy, he came out of hospital with no signs of the disease. Even he started to play the piano with his fingers, which were stiff before. And then he wrote one book called Anthology of Disease, where he described the way how he loved his way out of the, <laughs> of the hospital. So that, uh, these kind of stories are there. They illustrate that mind has power. Uh, the body affects the mind. The mind affects the body. So in biopsychology, we try to study this connection between mind and body. You, you can move a little bit because this just... This uh, one kind of slide is there before. It's about... Uh, now there is one phenomenon, it's called iatrogenic diseases. Uh, the sicknesses which are created by the modern medicine. You, you get cured with something, but then you get another problem. So I'm not against any modern medicine. I am very much in support of the modern medicine. It's a great uh, that we have. You can imagine that uh, if we wouldn't have modern medicine, maybe none of us would be alive today. Like in my childhood, I had a lung inflammation. Pneumonia. That means I am a dead person. If I was uh, living like 100 years ago, I wouldn't be surviving. But it is just one branch of the medicine. Uh, it is better to focus not on how to cure disease, but better to focus how to live such a life that you are never sick. Okay? So today, more and more people explore different holistic methods. Uh, acupuncture, yoga, uh, nutrition, uh, to remain healthy. So in biopsychology, uh, we explore the connection of the mind and the body. And uh, the very important concept that we are going to talk is the concept of the chakras. Uh, the chakras, um, you know, when we hear today, oh, chakras, oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a deeply esoteric concept. Uh, but if you, um, first of all, there were some attempts to study uh, on the, uh, with the devices to measure the, the field, like this is Kirlian effect. Uh, to, there was this uh, researchers who have tried to study this uh, biofield of the human beings. 
so I believe that in future there will be technology to really register the chakras. But for me, uh, I don't mind that much the technological studies, but uh, I can observe in my own body. You can have the feelings of emotion in your own body. Like for example, I think most of all of you will uh, give me a very correct uh, understanding where the emotions are. Where do you feel love? Here. <laughs> so how do you feel love? You feel some kind of warmth and... Uh, but if you feel hurt also, where do you feel? Uh, same, but <laughs> painful. Fear? Here. Mm -hmm. Anxiety? Anxiety? Where? No. Anxiety. <gasps> what will happen? I don't know. Here also. Here. Yeah. So emotions. You can just by trying to feel that emotion, you will feel it in a certain portion of the body. And by exercising that portion of the body, you affect also the emotion. So in this class I want to explain, uh, today I will focus on the lower chakras and the emotions which are there. So I will make one drawing here. <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, so you see there. Uh, the chakras represented as a lotus flowers. And if every lotus flower has a certain number of petals. Four, six, ten, twelve, sixteen, two, and the final one is thousand. So every petal represents one kind of emotion. Uh, chakra in Sanskrit means, do you know what is chakra? Chakra means circle, circle. So chakras are described as a whirlpools of energy, so rotating energy. And then there is also these uh, petals, they are called vritti. Vritti, uh, in Sanskrit, vrit means to rotate also. So they also describe as a smaller whirlpools of energy. So these vrittis, they are energy structures that vibrate the mind. And when they vibrate the mind, like a field of the mind, that vibration of the mind we experience as a certain emotion. So, okay, let's go and talk about the vrittis. So in the first center, there are four uh, vrittis, Kama, Artha, Dharma, and Moksha. They represent four fundamental desires, uh, four fundamental needs of the human being. Four instincts are there. Uh, food, sleep, uh, procreation, and security. So this is called Kama, physical longing. Next one is called Artha. Artha means psychophysical longing. I also want something of physical world, but it is not that my body wants, it is my mind wants. For example, do you want to eat? No, now it's going to be lunch. Do you want to eat? Yes, I'm very hungry. So what is there? Well, there is some porridge. No, but this is lunch. Porridge is for money. I don't like porridge. I don't want porridge for the lunch. So what do you want? I, maybe I want pizza, some salad. <laughs> so this statement, I want pizza, is done by whom? By body or by the mind? It is the mind 
who wants to experience certain physical pleasure. So this artha, you can say the, the lower, this one, is the domain of karma, physical desires. These two is the domain of artha. These three is the domain of dharma. And this one is the domain of moksha. Physical desire, psychophysical desire, psycho-spiritual desire, and spiritual desire. Okay? So here, on the level of Svadhisthana chakra, uh, this chakra is the chakra of pleasure. I want to enjoy. When this chakra is developed, people have good taste. They have good taste in their clothes, they look very nice, uh, they are good cooks. They, they, they know about pleasure, they, they know how to enjoy in life. Okay? You like this? <laughs> this is good. Uh, weak Svadhisthana chakra means person cannot control pleasure. There is one vritti here. Uh, it's called uh, prashraya. Uh, it, it means I cannot control my uh, desire. I like some sweet things. So when I eat lunch, I must have some sweet. And I might, must eat more and more. I cannot control myself. So all kinds of addictions. Addictions to sweet, addiction to cigarettes, to alcohol, to sex, etc., etc., etc. This is this one written here. But if you have this chakra developed, then you control. You don't have addictions. And you have this beauty about yourself. Whatever you do is beautiful. You cook food, that food is great. You wear clothes, you look very nice. Okay, that's the Svadhisthana chakra. So at this level, uh, people just enjoy pleasures of life. And at this level, uh, people enjoy position in society. The next uh, development of this psycho-physical desire is your particular position of society, in society. And uh, there is this philosophy about Varnas. That there are four mentalities of people and they enjoy in different way. One is called Shudra, the worker mentality. Another one is Kshatriya, warrior mentality. Another one is Vipra, intellectual mentality. And another one is Vaishya, uh, entrepreneur mentality. So, some people enjoy money, making money. Some people enjoy power, becoming more and more powerful. Some people enjoy intellectual power, creating the narrative in the world and, and gaining that kind of intellectual authority. And uh, some people enjoy uh, freedom. So this is the expression of the artha on the level of Manipura chakra. This is interesting topic for you or not? Interesting? Okay. So then, so this is artha. You understand what is artha? Psycho-physical desire. The mind longs for physical world. To enjoy things of the physical world. On this level, the mind in, wants to enjoy spiritual world. The mind here wants to grow transcendent. Transcend the body, transcend the individuality. Feel yourself more collective, less individual, more collective, enjoy. Like for example, Anahata Chakra. Here there is a feeling of love. What is this love? Love, you go beyond your borders. And instead of I, you feel us. We feel we. And that we is very powerful. And then, anyway, when I will explain higher high chakras, you will understand more. And then finally, 
So psycho-spiritual desire mind wants to experience something which is spiritual, special joy, special happiness, special purpose. And then here is spiritual desire. Spiritual desire means uh, I want to obliterate the mind. I want to be free from the mind. I want to become completely free as a pure spirit. Spiritual liberation. Okay. So these are the four dimensions of human life. You can say you are completely happy if you are able to express all the four. If you're only expressing one, it's not enough. Let's say physical desire. We put you in one room and we give you food every day, but no telephone, no communication. Your all physical desires are fulfilled. But are you going to be happy? You're not going to be happy. Okay? Uh, so if you fulfill physical plus psychophysical desire, you are much more happy. And mostly our society today offers these two desires, physical and psychophysical. Sometimes on the level when we have family, we feel here in the heart something, we feel love. And for love we are ready to sacrifice even our physical desires and uh, so many things we are ready to sacrifice because this is much more happiness than here. To be truly happy, you need to express all the four desires. Okay, now we go to Svadhisthana Chakra. Svadhisthana Chakra uh, represents the level of consciousness of crocodile or turtle or uh, shark. Very cold emotions. Uh, I treat the world as my playground. Whatever I like, I take. So that is Svadhisthana Chakra. Cold emotions, reptilian emotions. And it goes like this. First one is called Avagya. Avagya means uh, belittlement of others. People enjoy putting other people down. Did you meet that kind of uh, mentality? In confident people, to gain some confidence, they need to suppress other people. So that's very common amongst people because this is ingrained in our psychology. You don't have to learn it. It is there within us. It is there also with the monkeys. I was playing with some monkeys in India. And I found, wow, this is very they like us. <laughs> they exactly like us. So, Putting other people down, this one, uh, Babha, mental stupor, uh, maybe you sometimes experienced, when there is tremendous fear, uh, you become kind of paralyzed, your mind becomes paralyzed, the mind is very inactive. One time we uh, catch one cat. Uh, we had a center in Siberia. And one cat came very wild and she was living there. So uh, everybody's curious. Oh, this cat, look, there is a cat there. <laughs> so we decided to catch the cat. But when we, we caught the cat, the, the cat became so scared, it became completely paralyzed. Just like. And we got also scared. Like, oh, did we kill the cat? <laughs> so we dropped the cat, and the cat is just starting to move with the robotic movements, like, uh, uh. <laughs> and then slowly, slowly, it uh, came alive, and then it ran away. So that kind of paraly paralysis is there. Did you see the gods? Yeah. The gods, when they get scared, were like, uh. <laughs> And they fall. This looks very funny, but not very funny for them. <laughs> it means there is such a strong fear, such a strong emotion that the ghost <laughs> And then slowly, slowly they, they come alive. So that emotion is there. It's called stupor. Also on the mental level, sometimes we just feel the mind is not moving. It's, if you give lecture, for example, uh, when the first time I gave lecture in my life, 
I open my mouth and I say Namaskar, I'm happy to see you all. And I went into the state of stupor. <laughs> it's just like the mind is not moving. You cannot do anything. You do experience sometimes? Yeah, that's what Swadhisthana Chakra does to you. Uh, you will wonder why these vrittis are there, what for? <laughs> in, the, in the very long, in very distant evolutionary past, that was the protection mechanism. There is a big dinosaur running after the small dinosaur. And the small dinosaur is running very fast, but then he understands that. No chance. So the only chance is to pretend that you are a cactus. <laughs> so you become frozen mentally, physically, and then the big dinosaur is just like, where is my dinosaur? There is a cactus here. <laughs> and then he walks by. So sometimes we go into this freeze, also in a relationship, we go into that kind of freeze, we freeze. I saw one time, I was in the train, and there is one couple. The wife, little bit Manipura Chakra, and she's pressing the husband very strongly. And, <laughs> and logic very simple. Did you marry me? Yes. Did you promise that you will cover my everything? My expenses, this, 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 this? Yes. Where is the money? <laughs> So with that logic, she follows him very strongly, you know, pressurizes. At some point, I, I'm just very curious, I look what is going on. At some point, he just becomes frozen like this. And then she goes around like, hey, hello? I'm talking to you, hello? And he's just like... That's, that's, the, that's how you save yourself. <laughs> You get frozen. So many times, in a relationship, many times this happens. People just freeze, either physically or mentally they freeze, they just stop responding. That's uh, called Swadhisthana Chakra. Needless to say, uh, it is not very effective strategy to build a good relationship <laughs> and to, to have a harmony in your life. Babha Ma Prashaya. I want to enjoy something, some pleasures. And I cannot deny myself pleasures. So all kind of addictions, they come from this. There are many addictions. Addiction to the smartphone, addiction to sugar, addiction to sex, addiction to games, addiction to whatever. So the, I cannot deny myself pleasure. So that's the uh, one that in Swadhisthana Chakra. Yeah. Um, avishwasa. Avishwasa, lack of confidence. I'm unable to decide something. Vishwasa means firm decision. One first factor necessary for success. So, Avishwasa is inability to decide. I am inconfident. Oh, maybe like this, maybe like that. Could you please uh, possibly somehow. <laughs> so that's called avishwasa. So lack of confidence. And then when you, you have uh, no confidence in yourself, uh, then also it manifests as a distrust to other people. Confident people, they're not afraid of anything. In confident people, um, you need to create uh, so much safety for them to express themselves. So confidence is very important. Strong Svodhisthana Chakra, strong confidence. Okay, in confidence. Then, this one, Yara. Uh, fear of annihilation. Yeah, there, there is one slide there. <coughs> yeah, this. Annihilation means destruction, death. Yeah. So, Svodhisthana Chakra, in the body also they control different functions. So Svadhisthana Chakra is connected with, it is water factor, so it is connected with urinary system. And when you feel very strong uh, stimulation of these vrittis, 
this Vajdhisthana chakra loses functionality and is unable to control. So when people are faced with the fear of death, and normally urine goes, uh, it happens in many, many situations. Yeah. You can experience, it's not an advice, but <laughs> uh, like very tall building and you come to the edge of the building and you look down. What you will feel? You will feel your legs shaking and here you will feel like very unpleasant feeling, some kind of like electric unpleasant feeling in this area. Uh, six fingers down from the navel. That's the Svadhisthana chakra, the pubic area. At this, at this place you will feel very uncomfortable. And then there is this uh, final, it's called Krurata. Krurata is the vritya, uh, it's kind of crudeness. You are like an elephant moving and <laughs> doing unpleasant things for others. But you yourself are not, not noticing. So, oh, oh, did I inconvenience you? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're not getting it, like, that my behavior is unpleasant. So that's called krurata, crudeness. Uh, people, like, enjoy... Uh, nowadays you see some movie and they will use all these uh, bad words, you know. All the time they use bad words. Why? <laughs> because they enjoy that kind of crudeness. That is the... here. If the Svadhisthana chakra is strong, you will never like crudeness. You never like in your, uh, to be vulgar. You will like to be very nice and very refined and very beautiful. If it is weak, the crudeness will always express. In speech, in, uh, in behavior. So what to do with this chakra? Okay, number one, asana. Asana. Can someone demonstrate? Well, Priya Krishna, please come here. <laughs> <laughs> huh? We did this morning. Okay, please come. You sit on that. On that one. Okay, one asana called Gomukasana. At the same time, I take exam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gomukhasana called uh, cow's head because from distance it looks like a cow's head. So you squeeze your uh, lower glands, and that have very strong positive effect on the Svadhisthana chakra. Another one is called Yoga Mudra. Yeah. Another one is called uh, Dirga Pranam. You know, there is, uh, I had one very interesting case. One lady came to me and she said, Dada, I want to give birth, but uh, my cycle already stopped. What to do? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I can advise you, you do these asanas. So I give you this yoga mudra, dirga pranam, and cobra plus kaoshiki dance. And then in uh, two months she wrote to me, she said, Dada, I'm pregnant. <laughs> and she gave birth. <laughs> so to me that was one kind of miracle. But uh, actually these asanas, they, uh, for, especially for ladies, very important because uh, the male physiology is much simpler. Uh, but female physiology is very important that the cycle 
goes very smooth. There is no any delays, there is no any pain. So those people who suffer pain and troubles with the menstrual cycle, uh, it's, it's the problem of Svadhisthana Chakra. So by doing these asanas, you remove that problem. One also, my student, she said, Dada, I was thinking, what is missing? I understood now. Since I'm practicing yoga, I don't have any pain during the cycle. And I, I thought, something is different. Some, now I understand. My whole life I was suffering with pain. Now I don't suffer with pain. So you regulate through the asanas, you regulate the activity of the Svadhisthana Chakra. You heal that center. And then this entire area becomes okay. Okay? So this is a kind of... And another one is cobra also. Then there is a number of exercises, which are breathing exercises. You lie down in the Shavasana, and then you focus your mind at the Svadhisthana Chakra. Svadhisthana Chakra, for males I can explain, like if you uh, make a cut, so the genital organ, the, if you cut, then this lower portion is Svadhisthana Chakra. This is the place. So then focusing in this place, and when you're breathing in, you imagine that you breathe in like the air comes not through your nostrils, but the air comes through, the, through this point. Prana, Prana Shakti. This is one kind of breathing exercise. And you are breathing seven times. You breathe in. As you breathe in, you imagine that the prana, vital energy, is entering into this point. And when you breathe out, you let this energy go and merge with the universal energy. So this kind of exercise, they are called mudras, breathing mudras. And for every chakra, there is one kind of mudra like that. You understand the idea? Okay, then another one uh, is uh, uh, cooling down the genital area. When we go to the toilet, um, first of all, we need to clean ourselves uh, because uh, there will be some bacteria and they will create irritation in our nerves. And if there is a little even irritation, we, we may not notice consciously, but still the nervous system sends the signals to the brain. And in that way we are losing the energy. So best is to be free from any kind of excitement, any kind of irritation. So after we go to the toilet, we pour the cold water over the genital organ. And that cools down and calms the mind. And it creates very good uh, hygiene and it, uh, it provides for very good health of the genital area, both for men and for women. You saw our, uh, there is one kind of, uh, how to say, the hygienic shower, so that we use all the time. After some time you become so accustomed to this, you cannot go to the toilet without uh, so sometimes I take the bottle with me, like if I'm traveling somewhere, I have the bottle. So when I go to the toilet, I use that. It's very simple practice, but it has a very, very strong effect on the mind. Also, for there is a male practice, uh, it's called uh, langota. This kind of underwear. <laughs> we, we, no, not hammer. <laughs> we, uh, we wear this kind of underwear. It's a very ancient Indian style. There is one story. There was one king. He enjoyed 
a championship of the wrestlers. But his team was always losing. So he got very frustrated, like, what's going on? Why my wrestlers are always losing? So he went to the sages for advice, how I can make my team win. So the sages meditate and they say, okay, let them wear this. <laughs> and then they start to win. Because that's a particular way to, uh, to fix your genital area. And in that way, there, if there is no movement, there is no excitement, there is no irritation. All the mental energy is preserved. First time when I put it on, I felt very powerful. I felt, wow, I am now free from all the desires. And I am powerful. I can do whatever I like. <laughs> so that was very strong uh, feeling. And I use it all the time. So that is the, uh, another one. Uh, hygiene. Uh, then, um, very important to be free from constipation. Constipation creates the heat in the eastern intestines. And uh, you cannot meditate if you have constipation. It is very, very uh, difficult. So, we, most important in the morning to go to the toilet and to clear yourself. And for that, Svadhisthana so chakra is connected with water. You need to drink lots of water. Lots of water. All the time. You need to keep the bottle all the time. If you don't see the water, you don't drink water, you forget. And that creates uh, conditions for the constipation. Three liters of water per day. That's a suggested amount. Uh, th there are some foods which always stimulate this center. Onion, garlic, meat, fish, eggs. Those foods, they uh, negatively affect that Svadhisthana chakra. So asanas, breathing. Okay, these are mostly the methods. So now we come to the third center. It's called Manipura Chakra. Manipura. Pura means city. And money means a very shining, beautiful diamond. City of diamonds. Uh, this chakra makes you very much interested in the name, fame, power, money, all the material desires are here. So it has 10 petals. It uh, controls the fire element in the body. If this chakra is very strong, you have good uh, digestion. And good digestion gives you lots of energy. So center of energy. If this one is weak, then you feel sleepy, feel lazy, uh, unenergized. Your eyes also become very kind of foggy. If Manipura Chakra is strong, eyes are very like piercing type. Okay, so we go through the vrittis. Uh, ten one, ten vrittis here. Uh, first one here is uh, called Pishunata uh, is a sadistic tendency in human being. Monkeys also have it. Sadistic tendency is to enjoy, to have pleasure when somebody is feeling pain. So, like if you want to take revenge, somebody hurt you, what do you want to do? You want to hurt back, right? <laughs> And after you have done, you feel like, yeah, revenge, <laughs> eye for an eye. So that is the, and also, for example, uh, when people watch this kind of boxing or MMA, when they are hitting each other, 
that's also Tishunata. Uh, you enjoy this sadistic tendency in, in the navel. Do you enjoy sometimes the fighting? <laughs> no? <laughs> so that's... Uh, do you enjoy good revenge? No? No, be honest. If somebody hurt you, don't you like them? Somebody is also... We say, God sees everything. If you translate it to English language, is that I want very much for you to feel pain. And I believe that God will help me to arrange the situation that you will feel pain. So, so the, God will take care of you. Or Prakriti, whatever. Nature will take care of you. So this is the Vriti Pishunata. It's a sadistic Vriti. Also, it is uh, very important in evolution because it creates the order in society. Eye for an eye. Uh, it's a good strategy. If you are always good, then people will misuse you, misutilize your goodness. Uh, so you need to revenge sometimes. But then if it is very emotional, you have to like uh, become very calm and then you respond. Okay, you've done something bad to me, then I will also restrict some uh, good things to you. Uh, but then if you are very uh, emotional about it, that anger, that desire to hurt somebody, it destroys yourself. It creates a very strong stress and it creates disease within us. Uh, then there is this uh, shame. Shame is one kind of form of fear. You feel just uh, restricted. You cannot... Uh, go against your shame. Yeah, so the, this is uh, one kind of pishunata, uh, giving the, the pain to others. Uh, this is called kashaya, the irritation. You just feel these people are so irritating. I want to hit you. <laughs> okay, next. Yeah, like this is a small irritation. I cannot cross the road. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, the, like we can uh, endure uh, strong stress, like divorce, somebody died. But uh, small, small, small stress every day uh, accumulating and then results in the, very, in the collapse of the system. So, because in, in the past, we, we learned how to mobilize for the, for the big stress. Uh, the stress is the reaction, uh, fight or flight response. So, when you see a big danger, you mobilize yourself to run or to fight. But in the present day, you go forward. 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 In the present day, what is this situation here? Somebody disapproves. I'm saying something, but everybody is like, what are you saying? <laughs> so I will take it as a psychic attack. And I will go into the state of fight and flight response. What is this fight and flight? My. Uh, Digestion will stop, the, the blood pressure will go high, uh, sugar in blood will increase, the, the, the liver will release, and this is a very good way to die very soon. <laughs> and then also is the good way to be always weak. Uh, like if you are constantly in stress, the digestive system will stop and you will have no energy. So, okay, I will go through. So here is uh, shame. Uh, then here is envy, jealousy. Here is um, staticity, laziness. I don't find any motivation no energy to move. 
Here is melancholy. Nobody loves me. What is this world? Everything is dark. We are all going to die. So this, this is called melancholy. Then irritation, I was talking about. Then uh, deep desire, like it's called Trishna. I want something very strongly. I want to get this position in my work. I want to buy this car. Very strong desire. I want something very strongly. Trishna. Then uh, attachment. What is attachment? Attachment is the mother of all those vrittis. The bigger attachment, the bigger will be irritation, the bigger will be jealousy. With whom you have more disagreements? With the far people, distant people, or with your relatives? With your relatives, you fight very strongly and you feel very strong emotions. The stronger grows the attachment, the more vulnerable you become. In the body also, we feel, like for example, in the body, uh, this area, we are more attached to, to this area and less attached to the, this is the least point of attachment. This is the biggest point of attachment. For example, if you are walking in the nature and suddenly you step into something, some cow was there before. <laughs> so you, you step and you feel like, oh, okay. <laughs> then you can survive, okay? Uh, if you touch with your hands, you already feel very unpleasant. Your hatred, it is also the vritti of uh, Manipura chakra, is activated, you feel very unpleasant. But if you touch with the face, it will become intolerable. So the more attachment there, the more of other vrittis are going to uh, express also. So attachment is here. And then finally, uh, finally is the hatred. I don't accept something. I reject, I dislike something. I strongly reject it. That's called hatred. And then there is emotion of fear. Uh, fear very much dependent on attachment. Why do I fear? I fear because I am afraid to lose the object of attachment. Attachment gives us pleasure. But at the same time, it gives us fear. If no attachment, no fear also. One time I was sitting and meditating in the Far East Russia. I sit in the bench in the, in the city and I put my shoes down. So I'm sitting in the lotus posture and meditating. And I hear there is some company, very drunk people. So I cannot meditate because I'm worrying about my shoes. <laughs> I'm thinking, if, if something happens to the shoes, what I'm going to do? <laughs> so it disturbs. That's I'm attached to my shoes. <laughs> I cannot meditate. <laughs> do you want to hear what happened in that story? <laughs> I was sitting, I, I went to the shop. I was waiting my train. And I purchased three apples for, for dinner. So there was the three apples here, and I'm meditating. In that day before, uh, when I came out in that city, I had to wait like five hours. And I had this feeling, today I must initiate somebody. Today I will teach somebody meditation. And my rational mind tells me, where are you going to teach anybody meditation? It's not going to happen. But in my heart I feel, today I meet somebody, I'm going to meet somebody, I'm going to teach meditation. So I'm sitting on that bench, meditating, then there are some drunk people around me. 
And I meditate, meditate. At some point, I open my eyes. I look, my three apples gone. <laughs> I'm thinking, wow, what is this? <laughs> okay, I'm without dinner today. Then I meditate again. Meditate, meditate, I open my eyes. Two apples are back. <laughs> I mean, wow, what is happening? Again, I close my eyes. Again, I meditate. Then finally, I finish meditation. And then there is uh, two boys in front of me. They say, you know, these people who are drunk, they stole your apples. They took it away. But we chased them and took those apples back and we returned to you. I say, oh, thank you very much. Now I, I can have dinner. And then this one boy asks, he said, what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing meditation. So is it something like connection to God? I say, yes, something like that. Mm. And then off I went. And in that small city, I went and I lost my way. Uh, I got lost. I don't know where is the station. So I had to come back to the square. And from the square again start searching my path. So when I'm coming back, this boy is running after me. He said, please teach me meditation. I said, are you serious? He said, yes. You have to do twice a day. Yes. So then we went, we sit. I taught him meditation. And then I found my path and then I went by the train. So that's one story. <laughs> but this is uh, like if you are attached to something, why you are not able to concentrate in, in meditation? The main reason is attachment. Somebody says, oh, Dada, how I can meditate? I feel pain in my leg. It means your attachment to your leg is more than to Supreme Consciousness, to the idea of the Supreme Consciousness. If you grow more fond, more loving towards that Supreme Consciousness, you will forget the pain of the body. Or your day-to-day -day activities. For example, you quarreled with your husband. And when you meditate, you don't use the mantra, you use the, your husband's name. I will tell you next time these things. <laughs> I should have told you that. So that means attachment. Attachment is working. And attachment is the main thing that doesn't allow you to progress in spirituality. So breaking the attachment, overcoming the attachment is a big art. Okay, so now what to do about Manipura Chakra? Okay, we will come, yeah. So asanas, uh, chakrasana, you can do? With a breakfast in the bed. Ah, it's okay. <laughs> you will digest now very fast. <laughs> so chakrasana, uh, even children can do this asana. And it uh, stimulates the growth. Like if the child is very lean and thin, if he does this kind of chakra, uh, chakrasana, he becomes very muscular. Okay. So you see that this whole area is getting uh, stretched. And then opposite to, uh, to this asana, there is this utkata paschimottanasana. No, no, wait. Utkata paschimottanasana. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Utkata Pashimotan. You stretch it, then you squeeze it. Then another important asana is called Matsyandrasana. No, there is no there. Matsyandrasana, yes. Here you twist your... First time when I did this asana, I felt like explosion of heat in my body. It was great. <laughs> Matsyandrasana is considered to be Sarvarogahara. It means killer of all diseases. And then another one is called Mayurasana. <laughs> Mayurasana. Mayura means peacock. Peacock can 
Peacock can digest even the snakes. Uh, not only breakfast. Not only breakfast. <laughs> yeah, so this is called Maxim Rational. Yeah. You think it is very difficult, but it is not difficult. You just need to find the balance. Every one of you can do. It's, it's no problem. And with that asana, you get really, you create the heat in the, you create the digestive power. And with digestive power, you create energy. Then there is a mudra called uh, Agnisara Mudra. Yeah. Agnisara Mudra. You have to breathe out, and then you have to touch your spine. Yeah. How is it possible to touch your spine? You try. <laughs> Bottom of your stomach you have to touch. Then there is one mudra called Udayana Mudra. Yeah. So nice, you know, when somebody is demonstrating, I just have to talk. <laughs> See, yeah, skinny. yeah. He has become a skeleton like this now. <laughs> In childhood, I, I used to do like my sister, all the sisters, like okay, show the skeleton. <laughs> I used to enjoy that kind of mudra. <laughs> so <clears throat> these are the most uh, main asanas. There are more. Uh, then breathing. In the Manipura chakra, it's called Agnei Mudra, breathing into this center. Then uh, cold water, cold water, taking cold shower. At least you finish the shower with cold water. It, it creates uh, power of the Manipura chakra. You know, now there is this method Wim Hof. He is like ice man. <laughs> so this is very good for uh, Manipura chakra. And there is very nice exercise I, I really advise you to do before meditation. It's called uh, uh, half bath. You go uh, open the as cold water as possible. So then you touch your Manipura chakra. You make it cold. Then fr from backside also Manipura chakra. And then you... Uh, from elbows down, you wet your hands from knees down also with the cold water. And then you keep some cold water in your mouth and you splash at least 12 times in the open eyes. So this splashing is like, it's called, uh, it activates diver's reflex. When animal dives, uh, to the nature equipped us with this uh, response that our heartbeat becomes slower, our breath becomes slower, so we can uh, stay longer without oxygen. And that helps you to be very calm. And this half bath, if you do for two months, uh, every day, all your stress will go away. And when the stress is gone, you will feel your digestion, digestive system working very strongly. And when your digestive system is working, you will have lots of energy. Okay, so this is very good exercise. Another uh, way to improve your Manipura Chakra, improve your energy, is fasting. Anybody fast? Who fasts? Wow, very good. Very good. So fasting, we fast here uh, four times a month. On the days of Ekadashi, Purnima and Amavasya. Ekadashi means 11 day after new moon, after full moon, new moon and full moon itself. So these are the most beneficial day because in those days the mind goes a little bit imbalanced. And by fasting you balance the mind. Uh, I always feel after fasting so much energy. I have to travel a lot and uh, speak, talk to the people, and it, it burns lots of energy. 
But when I fast, after fasting, I'm like a newborn. So it creates, it allows the digestive system to rest. And after rest, your digestive system works properly and then gives you lots of energy. So fasting, asanas, yeah, proper food also, uh, uh, nutritious and easily digestible food. Don't take heavy food, like meat is heavy, onion, garlic is also heavy, mushroom is heavy. There are three kinds of food, sattva, raja and tama. Tamaguna or dark food, heavy food, meat, fish, eggs, alcohol, tobacco, uh, mushrooms, onion, garlic. Uh, Raja guna, activating food. Tea, coffee, chocolate. Uh, it's so-so. Sometimes you can do, but better not. And best food is fruit and vegetables, grains, beans, uh, legumes, uh, dairy also. So this is the kind of food we eat. Yes. Why is mushroom particularly considered as a bad? I mean, they grow in the nature. They grow in nature, but like uh, heroin also grows in the nature. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a poppy seed, no? You extract. Or hemp also grows in the nature. And they have this harmful... First of all, they don't have uh, the photosynthesis. Uh, like every plant, they, they have this transformation of the energy uh, from the light and from the, uh, this uh, carbon dioxide, they create, and, and water, and uh, they create the carbohydrates. Uh, but the mushrooms, no, they just, whatever is rotting there, they, they take, and it's kind of like, almost like animals, <laughs> not like a plant. And the effect of the, of the mushroom is very, very tough for the mind. Like I was telling you, I took some antibiotics. I never in my life I took antibiotics. But uh, I had a surgery on my mouth, and the doctor told me, must take antibiotics. Antibiotics, like the classical antibiotic is penicillin. Of course, now it's different. Penicillin is a mushroom, is, is, the, is this uh, fungus, yeah. Uh, so when I took these antibiotics, I could not meditate for two weeks. And only when I stopped, after three days, uh, this ability to meditate started to come back to me. So they kind of blind the mind. The mind becomes very, very dull. Mm -hmm. So you can experiment with these foods. Uh, of course, there is some fear a little bit. I, at least I had fear. When I started to practice, I saw that he is vegetarian, he is vegetarian, he is vegetarian. And I'm thinking like, maybe it is very expensive to be vegetarian. Maybe I cannot do, maybe I will have not enough strength. But then somebody convinced me, you experiment, you try for one month. So then I experimented and I liked it so much. And then I never came back to that kind of diet. Uh, with vegetarian diet, you are much more energetic. You, you don't have that much tiredness in you. You are constantly, um, yeah, you have lots of energy. Because easy to digest and the, 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 the very quality of the food is, um, uh, is not tiring. You, you, you don't feel lazy. You, you enjoy action. Yeah. So it's, I think we are done. So low chakras, you can see how difficult those emotions are. Again, this, especially Manipura chakra. I feel the main challenge for us to jump from this center to this center. Here you are a very materialistic person, and here you are a spiritual person. Just one jump. Well, it's difficult to do. Uh, many times we are here in the Manipura chakra. Again, I will tell the emotions here. Uh, shame, uh, sadistic tendency, jealousy. Are you jealous sometimes? Yes. Yes? yes. Uh, how it feels? You know, there is very interesting, especially the male-female, there is a little bit difference in biopsychology. <clears throat> like for men, competition is kind of joyful. 
But for, for women, it's less joyful because jealousy gets activated. Like, what, what, and it is unpleasant. For men, it's somewhere here. It becomes like, okay, let's compete. <laughs> but then you don't feel really jealous. You're like, there is a challenge. And you activate this kind of feeling of effort. So that is a very nice competition. But uh, in, in males also it can be like this. It can trigger the jealousy. But when jealousy is activated, your everything is spoiled. You don't like that. It's it's very unpleasant feeling. Okay. So uh, shame, sadism, uh, jealousy, uh, staticity, tiredness, laziness, uh, melancholy. You are seeing the world. Oh, what is this world? There is no happiness in this world. <laughs> Suffering is the truth of this world. <coughs> Irritation? Desire? Strong desire? I want something? Attachment? Hatred? Fear? You can imagine how stressful this Manipura chakra is. So jump into Anahata chakra. Here immediately all problems are solved in Anahata chakra. Not all problems, there are some problems there also. <laughs> but there are much better problems than here. 